Hello, boys and girls. Welcome. Welcome to Grandma B's Story Corner. How are you today? Are you having a great day? Then come with me. Let me take you on a journey to places where you can allow your imagination to run wild. Come with me and behold undiscovered beauty, adventures, laughter, life trials, and how to be an overcomer. Come on, take a seat. Let Grandma B tell you stories that you will never forget. I'll teach you life lessons that will show you just how wonderfully and fearfully made you are. Listen to captivating stories that draws you in, in, and you wanting more and more. Come, join me, sit back, relax, get comfy. Do you have your snuggly teddy bear? Then come on, let's go to Grandma B's story corner. Let's have some fun, come on. Hey boys and girls, welcome to Grandma B's Story Corner. I want to invite you to come and spend some time with me. I have decided to start this program with a book that I know you love. It is called Little Pilgrim's Big Journey. Now this story being originally written by John Bunyan and it's adapted from the story Pilgrim's Progress. It's been adapted so that you can understand and I am excited to share this journey with you. So come on, let's start with the first chapter and once you're there and you like it, then can you please like it, share it, and then subscribe to my channel. Click that bell that you'll know every Thursday, I will have a new chapter for you. So until then, I'll see you in Grandma's Corner. Yay! Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to our first story. Little Pilgrim's Big Journey by John Bunyan. Now, this story, it's a story about a little pilgrim who made a decision in his heart that he was going to serve Jesus no matter what the cost. Have you ever said, I love Jesus? I want to serve him. Well, if you have, then you have started on your little pilgrim journey. That is beautiful. Now, the copyright of this story is by Tyler Van Halteren. The illustration is by Beatrice Mello. All of the scripture quotations are from the Holy Bible English Standard Version. And the narrator is none other than Grandma B. Official name, Bernadette Guineri. This story was written in 1661 by a man named John Bunyan when he was in jail. And he was put in jail because he was preaching the Bible. And at that time, they did not want the Bible to be preached. They were not allowed to talk about Jesus freely. Can you imagine not being able to say to someone, I love Jesus, or let us pray, or thank you, Jesus? So 
John Bunyan was in jail for 12 years. And in there, he created this story. Now, this story is an allegory, which basically means it has a deeper meaning. As we go along, you will understand. So chapter one, the city of destruction of little pilgrims, big journey. As I walked through the wilderness of this world, I found a quiet place to sleep. As I slept, I dreamed a dream. In my dream, I saw a boy named Christian dressed in dirty old clothes, and he had a book in his hand and a great burden on his back. He was crying to himself, oh, what can I do to be saved? At home, Christian told his family, this burden on my back grows bigger every day, and this book says our city will be burned with fire from heaven. If we don't find a way to escape, we'll surely die. But no one believed him. Oh, you're sick, they said. You know, you should go to bed. But the night was as troublesome to him as the day. Instead of sleeping, Christian lay awake. He cried. <laughs> Inside. <sighs> about everything he read in his book. In the morning, his family woke him and asked, how do you feel? Worse and worse, Christian answered. We live in the city of destruction. We must leave now. Christian read about the celestial city and about a king so kind and full of love that he invited everyone to join him there. The king has invited us all to the celestial city, Christian said. Please come with me. But his family became angry. Oh, stop telling us these fairy tales. They tried to change Christian's mind. They mocked him and bullied him and sometimes completely ignored him. But Christian, he wouldn't stop believing his book. Christian took his book to the field to read alone. He longed to travel to the celestial city. He thought, but what if I get lost on the way? And how will I travel with this burden? Someone called out to him. What are you worried about? It was a kind old man named Evangelist. Christian looked up. This book says my city will be destroyed with fire. I, I'm scared. I, I don't want to die. Evangelist pulled a note from his pocket. It was written by the king himself. Christian opened it and read, Flee from the city of destruction. Come find refuge in my city. I'll keep you safe and secure forever. Oh, Christian asks Evangelist, do you think it's true? And, and will my city be destroyed? Is the celestial city real? Yes, said Evangelist. Every word of it is true. The king wrote it all and the king never lies. Do you want to find the celestial city? Oh yes, Christian said, more than anything. Evangelist point in the distance. Can you see that light? Follow it until you find a narrow gate. When you get there, goodwill will tell you what to do. Christian sprinted towards the light in the distance, right through the middle of town. People saw him 
And they shouted, where are you going? Come back, Christian. Don't be a fool. Some laughed at him. <laughs> Look at him. He is so silly. And called him names. And some were sad to see him go, oh, Christian. But Christian didn't even look back. He kept running and running and shouting, I want life, true life, eternal life. Two boys from the town named Obstinate and Pliable chased after him. Hey, slow down, they yelled. Wait for us. Obstinate was a stubborn, strong boy caught up with Christian. He grabbed Christian by the arm and said, come back with me right now. Don't be a fool. I'm not a fool, said Christian. And I can't come back because you live in the city of destruction. But I'm seeking an everlasting city. Oh, please come with me. No way, said Obstinate. I could never leave all my friends and all my stuff. Christian answered, the friends and the pleasure you seek, uh, you speak of, can't compare to the joys I seek. I seek a treasure that can never be lost or stolen or broken. Read about it, read in my book. But Obstinate refused. Hush, I don't care about your book. Oh, let's go home, Pliable. Christian has lost his mind. Uh, don't make fun of him, Blybull told Obstinate. What if, if what he says is true, I, I'd like to go with him. Obstinate laughed. <laughs> then you're just as much a fool as Christian. Have fun searching for an imaginary city. And he turned and went back. That's the end of chapter one. It shows us that Christian, after worrying about his life and the fact that he knew his city was going to be destroyed, when he got in touch with evangelists, he made that decision to give his life to Christ. And he was not going to turn back, even though obstinate, and Plymouth tried to make him turn back. There were people who would call him fools and making fun of him. And you know what? Sometimes when we talk about Jesus to people who do not understand, they call us names. But do we care? No, because we know that Jesus is real. So boys and girls, I'll see you at the next chapter. And I have two questions for you when we start the second chapter, which is called The Bark of This Barn. Bye now. I hope you enjoy the story. I will see you later.